radiance to degrees be quicker and more natural. Like the other day we worked on pi over three, what is it? 60, okay? So I wanna get quicker at that. But even if I say something like five pi over three, what's that gonna be? Okay, 300, but I want all of us to get a little bit better, a little bit faster at it. So I wanna do something visual. Remember that circle we drew the other day? Where we had this and we did a circle um, I want you to redraw that, but I want you to leave room around the edges of your paper a little bit because we're going to write some things around there. But you have a protractor because remember how when we measured angles the other day, it was like the first time you've seen a protractor. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to measure some more protractors to make sure that you're, you're there. So get that drawn. I don't care what size, just leave a little bit of room around the sides. And then we're going to go from there. Welcome, ladies. Hello. How are you doing? Good. I was just explaining that you have some FFA students on today. Yes. So, and I'm all sweaty from... We, uh, we're almost done with that building. We're getting so close. <laughs> now we just got to get it out of there. Okay. Kyler, <coughs> what's a radian? Uh, the central angle from when the uh, arc length is equal to the radius. Boom. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Nice job. You guys all did very well with that on the test yesterday. I'm just going to eyeball 90 degrees. Okay. Shouldn't take you too long to draw. Axis as well. So I'm hoping by the end of the day we can be done with angles and every quadrant and then start moving on to the graph of sine and cosine. So now here's where we're going to strengthen your measurements. In every quadrant, please. I want a 30, a 45, and a 60 degree angle. I don't want to take the time to do this, but we need it. So 30, 45, and 60, and just draw them all. Actually, you know what? We don't need to draw those. What am I thinking? Just go ahead and give me a mark around the outside. So again, you don't need to draw the radius. Just ticks around the outside. That's all we need. Yep. In every quadrant where our reference angles are 30, 45, and 60. probably do the ones in the third quadrant just by extending the second quadrant moment through my center, but you guys can do it however you want. And I'm probably, I'm going to just do mine the shortcut method a little bit. River. Yeah. 180 degrees is how many radians? Um, just pi radians. Pi radians, that's right. Okay. 
This is something we usually do a little earlier, but with all these snow days and late starts, we're kind of backtracking just a hair. But from what I saw last night, we need to strengthen this. River, you got it? Yeah. Okay, so again, our whole goal here is we're gonna do a couple things with this. Um, I just wanna go around and I wanna write on the inside our degree measures for each one. Yeah, you guys know that that's 30 degrees up, 45 degrees up, 60 degrees up, but let's just strengthen that with how um, it would, it would um, relate to our angle in standard form. So 30, 45, 60, 90, keep going all the way around. Good. Hey, when you get done, check with my... You done already, Jesse? Because we kind of need to re be able to recognize what angle measures we can do real easily with our special triangles and not need a calculator. Um, and then what times we're actually going to need a calculator. So, so now let's kind of review what we did the other day. 30, what is it in terms of radians? Pi over six. six. Good. So let's write that down. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I want to do all the pi over sixes. 30 is pi over six. So this, let's kind of go, well, we can just, I don't know. I'm going to back off what I just said. What about 45? Pi over four. 60. Pi over three. And again, if you're struggling with that, 60 goes into 183 times. 180 is pi. We just reviewed that. Okay. So one third of that is going to be 60. So now let's take our 60s all the way around. So this is 160. That's pi over three. What would 120 be then? Two pi over three. Two pi over three. Let's write all these down. Another one would be three pi over three, which is obviously one. And what one, what angle would be next? Yeah, which degree measure would be next? 240, 240. good. So that'd be four pi over three. And then lastly would be three hundred, because it's another sixty, so it's another pi over three, five pi over three. And then we'd end up with 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. Okay? I want you to continue that same idea around with a 45. Just counting our pi over 4s around. And then we'll, I got something different we'll do with the 30s. For those watching at home, we got pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, over 4. then here, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which is 3 halves, here, 7 pi over 4, and we got 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi.
Do you have your 30s friends yet? Oh, sweet. Now, you don't have to do your 30s yet, because I'm going to do the approach that one just a little bit different. Okay? So on the 30s, this is kind of the way that I, 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 my brain works best with this, and I'll just at least present it to you. So I'm 30 degrees up. That's pi over 6. What about pi? How many pi's over 6 would that be? How many? 6 pi over 6. So the one before would be 5 pi over 6. The one after would be 7 pi over 6. Okay? And so now let's keep going to the other one. 2 pi over 6 would be how many pi's over 6? 12. So before that would be 11 pi over 6. Okay? So we're just working on a relationship between, between the two. Okay? Now, one of the things I bet gave you problems last night was 38 through 46. Might have been a struggle. So we're going to add that to this as well. So don't worry about that yet, Jesse. I'll get to there in just a second. So let's, I'm going to change colors here. If I can get it out of my pocket. Nice. Okay. If we assign coordinates to that point, the unit circle, help me out, we're going to go clockwise. What would this first one be? Come on, come on, we did this yesterday. What would my coordinates be? One, zero. Okay. One over zero up. Next one. Zero, one. Next one. Negative one, zero. Next one here. Zero, negative one. Okay. So now, let's go up to the upper left hand corner. Let's just review this a little bit. Sine of theta in terms of x, y, and r. What is it from before? Y over r. Good. Remember, y later in the alphabet. Um, it's like sine, it's a way to remember it, but we're going to keep going with that. Cosine? X over r, x over r tangent? Uh, y, y, over x. y over x, good. Okay. So now, we're, we're probably not going to write all these down, but this is just a way that you guys can always refer back to these. Okay. So let's say if I... I'm just anticipating you guys had some questions. I got it written out, though. I'll give it to you in just a second. So sine of 90. Y over R. What is it? No. Y over R. What's my radius? No. My radius is 1. So 1 over 1, which is 1. Where we'd see undefined would be like tangent. Okay? So tangent will go right here. I'm going to write down tangent. And there's... Kind of a reason why. Let's go tangent of zero. What is tangent of zero? Come on, tangent of zero. I thought we needed to work on this. Zero over one. It's y over x. Zero over one. So it's zero. Up here, tangent of 90 degrees. One over zero, which is undefined. Okay? So I wanted to, let's just think about this. I kind of trying to get you guys to think about what the graph might be. Undefined. Do you guys remember when we did rational functions? When we have something undefined, what the graph, what happened on the graph? So, just a little reminder. If we did 1 over x minus 2, it looked it looked like this. What's this that I'm drawing? What's it called? Asymptote. Okay. So we had an asymptote because at 2, if I'd plug 2 into that function, what would I get? Undefined. So when we start talking about tangent in a couple of days, When, when the angle gets closer and closer and closer to 90 degrees, what are we going to have on our graph? Undefined, so an asymptote. Okay? So that's just something just to kind of put in your memory banks. Okay, so. Where's my notes? Where's my notes? 
Oh, you guys can stay longer. Thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. Okay. So, that I think is handy. Now, I'm not going to let you use this on the cruise, but I think it just kind of strengthens how everything relates. Okay? And it's a good review of some of the things we've done before. So, tools back and pick up the homework sheet. <clears throat> Yeah, they're, they're um, since we have a new math curriculum and stuff, they're, it's, I don't know, it's always, always interesting. Every day is unpredictable. What? Every day unpredictable. Ah, I knew that. Uh, it was supposed to be Monday, but they postponed it because of all the weather and all that stuff. They can come in any day, I really don't care, I don't have to prep for it, so. It's just hard though because you know when maybe you've got people that you know, I don't know if they understand kind of the concepts we're trying to build. It's it's always interesting. So take a look, follow my logic, ask any questions you have. Um, Fifty-three. Oh, did I not do fifty-three? I don't think fifty-three was one of the missing. Yeah, I don't think it was. I'll take a look at fifty-three. I was just curious since it was on here. But I definitely put that down wrong. Okay. Yeah, so it's going to be um, sketch it in standard position, find the reference angle theta. Um, okay. Well, I'll... Um, I'll put it up on the board. How's that? So I got 4.8 radian. So 4.8, I'm saying it's probably going to be, so this is 6.28 because it's 2 pi. So it's probably going to be like this somewhere. And my reference angle here is going to be 2 pi minus that 4.8, whatever that would be. Okay. Um, like the, how do you 55? Like okay. Ones? I I'm gonna say a couple things here, and then and then we'll get to it. You'll notice that on 38 through 46, I always redraw this because I know that if I'm on quadrants or axis, I'm I'm gonna be needing that. So I just redraw it real quick. And then I just go back to my y over r and x over r and my y over x. You can see that here, I, I just go cosecant and I think sine, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flip sine when I'm done. Flip that when I'm done. Um, just cause I'm not gonna memorize that cosecant is r over uh, y, you know, cause it's just gonna screw something up. And I only got so much room in my brain to memorize things that really don't matter. It, you know, sine, that's important. But cosecant, I can always tie it back to something else. Okay? So, so 55. So 55, 225 degrees. So this is where, I, you know, the reason I wrote these out like I did is just because I think that, you know, this takes a while to kind of get the hang of. So 55. Hopefully you see kind of where my, where my drawing came from. I'm 45 degrees past my 180. Okay? So, so was your question, Lincoln, about the triangle placement? Well, it was like, how exactly the... The sides? Well, I just wasn't really sure on what, what to do with them. Okay, okay. I looked at the example that was... Got it. Okay. So in this particular case, they're asking for sine of 225, cosine of 225, tangent of 225. So then I've got... Um, so I just go ahead and draw it in standard position, and I note my reference in. And my reference angle is 45, so I'm going to try and draw a triangle that looks isosceles. Now, I want you to stop, take a deep breath, and look at all of my triangles. 
This one, obviously long and thin, because it's a 30. Don't draw your, your 30s like 45s. You'll, ma you'll make mistakes. This one, long and thin, long and thin, long and thin. And then this one, draw it isosceles, okay? Because what's going to happen is if you draw it so it's kind of isosceles looking, you're going to get your sides messed up, okay? So anyway, so I went ahead and drew my reference triangle. I'll go ahead and zoom in on this right now. Um, I should have told them this will be posted later for your jo uh, viewing enjoyment if you ever want to uh, um, watch this at home. Anyway, um, so I've got my triangle there. And then, so I'm just going to label. It's a 45, 45, 90, so I'm 45 degrees past my 180. And then I'm just going to throw in my sides, 1, 1, square to 2 and then get my negatives right. And now I can start to think about inside this triangle right here, Soka Matoa. And then that's how I'm gonna get so it. So it kinda goes back to that circle with the points on it, to the negative one. Yeah, a little bit, but, but okay. I, I see where you're coming from. Where was my length of negative one, negative one, and square to two coming from? That's just from the proportions of a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. But since it's going to the left, it'd be negative. negative and if it's going down, it'd be negative. negative. Yep, exactly. So yeah, there's no circle. There's, it's really not a unit circle in this case. It's just a triangle with the appropriate proportions. Because the sign is the same regardless of how big the triangle is. Um, that's just the triangle that's, that we all have memorized. So that's why I put those three sides on it. Okay. So on 57, you can see I said, okay, I'm going to subtract one rotation, see if that's enough. Nope, subtract another rotation, see if that's enough. I'm down to 30, and then I can go ahead and sprint that out. But I'm all, always writing my stuff as in tangent of 750, cosine of 750. Uh, 59, I'm just going to talk through a couple things I think might give, be giving you grief. So my 60-degree reference angle, I drew that here. My biggest side's opposite my 60. Okay, and then I just soak on my toe, watching my negatives. Watch your negatives. There's a, the way that books present it is they'll have you go, wait a minute, it would, they'll have you come up with a proportion and then remember, oh, sine, is that negative in that quadrant? If you just label your sides, negative if you're left and negative if you're down, it'll take care of it along with soak your toe. Okay, so at 120, you can see that 60 degree reference, reference angle. 63, same thing, 65, and I said, well, it's 1145, so it's pi over 4, subtracted 135, and then just kind of crank it out from there. And you'll notice here that, yeah, that 1 is positive because it's above the x-axis. So you're showing the pi, what would get you to your 180 first, right? Correct. And then you go from there? Yep, yep. So it's all about reference angle, okay? So if it is... Any of these measurements that we just got done with, you can do it without a triangle. You can do it without a triangle really nicely. Okay? You guys are like, oh, that's very nicely. It's a pain. I just rather do it with my calculator. But we can do it exactly. Okay? So, we are forced to leave here at what? Is it 50? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. We got plenty of time to develop this next thing. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So, I tried to write this out real good so you guys can kind of look back at that if you need to. Um, I will go ahead. I'm gonna just show the whole thing here real quick for those those lovely folks that are gone. Judging cows. So screenshot. Screenshot. Okay. So, now, here's where I think it gets, we can get into some theory, and it gets kind of cool. It gets kind of cool. Okay, so, nothing to write for a little bit. Just think with me. Just think with me, please. So if I have any old circle, 
let's do a little thought experiment on what's going to happen to my sign. Okay? Because what, what our goal here is, I would like to be able to come up with a graph where this is theta, and then this is my sine of theta. I'd like to graph it, see what we got. Okay. First of all, let's establish this. This point is one zero. We already just talked about that. What's my sine? And this is let's say it's a unit circle. What's my sine of zero degrees? Y over R. Zero over one. Which is zero. So the small at zero de zero degrees, my sine is zero. Okay, so now think about this. My sine is my y over r. As I rotate, what happens to my y? It increases. it increases. My radius doesn't change, does it? So as my angle increases, what's going to happen to my sine? It's also going to increase. Also going to increase. Because as my y increases, my sine increases. Okay, so it's going to go up. Is it going to go up slow or quickly at first? Slower. And if we go through here, my y is my y changing fast or slow right here? My height. Is my height changing fast or slow? Slow. Slow. So actually it starts out raising pretty fast, and then it starts, and then it kind of slows down. What's my sign right here? No. One over one, so it's one. So it's one. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my graph. 90 degrees, my sine is one. Okay? And we just talked about how my sine is going to increase pretty quickly, and then it's actually going to slow down because my y doesn't grow as quickly. Is my y ever going to get bigger? No. So. So now we're establishing is my range of my sine function. The highest it's ever going to get is 1. It's never going to get higher. Never going to get higher. So it's all that up here off limits. So as I keep rotating from 90 to 180, describe to me what's happening to my y. It's going to go back down. It's going to go back down. And then at 180 degrees, what's my y going to be again? Zero. So it's going to come back down. So we got uh, negative one, zero. Zero over one gives me zero. Okay? So now what's going to happen to my y? Or my sign? It's going to go down again. It's going to go down again, so my result's going to be what kind of number? Negative. A negative number. So my sign is my y over my r. My y is negative. Because if I would draw a little triangle right here, I've got a negative y. And then out here, I've got a negative y. Okay? So my sign is going to get negative. It's going to get negative. It's going to get negative.